Processing schematics, please stand by. All right, and welcome to the back room. Today's video is going to be around surge alloy rankings for Ministry schematics. As usual, you can find these schematics on ministryschematics.com. Credit goes to the creators there. Uh, I've got 12 this time, so there's a little bit more than last time. There uh, seems to be a few more opinions on how to do surge alloy. It's, it's one of the harder ones to do because it requires four inputs. It requires sand, coal, lead, and titanium, okay, as well as power, right? Power is just you know, required for most uh, manufacturing anyway. Uh, so let's go ahead and start off here. Um, so the first one up, we have chain surge alloy. So this one, the idea is that you can chain it, I assume, horizontally. It's not necessarily uh, easy to understand from that perspective. I guess it looks like the bottom here is pointing to the right, so everything exits to the right. There are some inputs here that would feed from the one that's next to it, and then feed from the... So you have your uh, silicon uh, factory up here needs to have... Um, your pyrotite be fed to it. So I assume you're going to need to feed in your resources from the top here, your sand and your coal. It'll then get fed down to this uh, pyrotite mixer, which will then feed the lead back, or let's see, feed the pyrotite back up to the top here, go to there. And then some lead gets pulled down into the surge alloy um, factory mixer, whatever this is called. And then this will share the resources between them. So you're going to need to feed in all of the resources from somewhere. Looking at this, it's not readily visible where you're going to get your copper and your titanium. Hmm. There is a junction here, so I assume that something's supposed to come up here and into there, and that might be at least one of these two resources. I would have put a second junction here and put copper and titanium. That way you can visibly see that that's where you're supposed to come up. But just looking at it, I'm not, this is not exactly clear where this is supposed to go. So the idea is that you can tile this from right to left, and but then you, and this will pull resources in from wherever. So maybe you're supposed to put like a core right here, and then you can feed from that, and then you work your way off to the, the left here, possibly. Uh, it's a little confusing. I think the idea is, is good. It's nice that you don't have to, uh, I mean, it's got the, the, the silicon production as well or included with this. Uh, it does make it a little bit larger. Uh, it's probably not my top pick for creating surge alloy, but we'll, so we'll go ahead and get, give it a, a modest B for now. Moving on to this one. So this one, uh, you may have seen in some of my previous videos that I have a few examples of building around a core. And I'm not a huge fan of doing that, but I think this must be something people do quite often in multiplayer because I've seen many of these. And this just isn't practical in single player. Uh, I mean, you could have some sectors where you build around a core like this and you build lots of surge alloy and you ship in a lot of resources, but how do you get the resources out if you're putting it right back into the core? Yeah, that's a problem. So it's an interesting idea if you're just wanting to produce a whole bunch, but you need a way to get this off, off world. So the idea here is you pull all your resources out of the middle core, you feed it up into the, the, the factories that are a little farther out, and then you use bridges to bridge them back in and go to the middle. Okay, uh, I think you'd get a lot of surge alloy from this. Uh, that's why I included it, actually. It was because I was I was like, you know, if I got if I can figure out a way to maybe just use half of this uh, and be able to ship some of this off world or something like that, or not off world, off sector. This would be a really good surge alloy way to just build a whole bunch of factories all in a compact area. Okay, so if I maybe re reverse the direction of these bridges and have them come out then I could uh, just ship a bunch of resources to here, have this one make it, and then have this sector ship it out someplace else. So I think this is a could be useful. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give this one a, a B. It's not one I would use regularly, um, but it's an interesting idea. Maybe worth experimenting with and see uh, if you can get a lot of surge alloy from this. All right, this next one here is called Scrap to Surge Alloy. This one, I sat and looked at this one for a bit, little bit, trying to figure out what it was doing. And I like this one. Uh, I think as a self-contained uh, production center, it's pretty good. It has a, a, a plastinium conveyor belt up here that feeds in scrap. Scrap then is used to split up into making uh, sand. So you can see there's, a, there's one bridge here that goes over to a, a crusher or that then splits it over to another crusher, which then creates your sand and feeds it into your silicon press. 
So the, the other side of this creates your slag, puts it into a, a water bridge or a liquid bridge, and then feeds it over to these four different dis, uh, disassemblers. And then this uh, has another bridge inside here that feeds it back in a, in a U shape back to these these overflow gates. These overflow gates then feed the, the uh, graphite, and then it feeds us into a furnace, which then destroys the, the graphite. Everything else gets dropped into this container and shared with this other container and then dropped into your pyrotype mixer, which is used to create the pyrotype for making your silicon. Your silicon then uh, loads it into this, this uh, container. The container then empties it into the other container and feeds eventually all the resources get dumped into your surge alloy. So I, anyway, I also should mention one more thing. There's, there's some spore cultivators over here that drop it into a spore crusher, which then goes into a coal extractor and then you get your coal and your sand. So all you have to do is just provide sand to this and power, and you should get surge alloy. There, I am looking at this a little bit and wondering if there's gonna be a problem with trying to get enough, get the silicon through here to there. If this disassembler or this container gets full, it might run into a problem uh, of having the wrong resources. And I think that's what this is for. This It's got an unloader here, which dumps everything out. And so if you end up with too many resources, this will dump out the resources uh, and so that you have room to pull over more silicon and go from there. So overall, I think this is a really good compact way to create surge alloy. So I'm going to give this one an A tier. It's not, it's, I'm not going to give it an S tier because uh, I wouldn't use this unless I absolutely had to. Um, but it's really good. It is, it's a little bit hard to understand. And if something broke, you could run into some problems. But whoever came up with this put a lot of thought into it. And I was impressed as I read this one or looked through this one. All right, moving on to the next one. We've got Surge Alloy 2. I'm not sure why it's called 2, but it's got containers on the left and on the right-hand side, or vaults, if you want to call them. You can go for that. Uh, it pulls the resources out of it and feeds them across to all six of these Surge Alloy smelters. The Surge Alloy comes across on these bridges and gets fed out to wherever it needs to go. I've seen versions that are similar to this that I like better than this one. The idea is, I, is cool because you can just feed in, put in your resources where it needs to go. And no matter if you put, read it from the right hand side or from the left, you should get all the resources everywhere that you need it to go. And you have lots of room to put lots of conveyor belts in. Um, I don't think it's necessary to have the vaults the way this is set up. You'll see another option that's a little bit better than this. Um, this one, I'll give it a, a solid C. Uh, it's not one I would use very often, but you know it's got some interesting elements that you'll see used in other schematics. Okay, moving on. Uh, this is Surge Alloy 2x2. In fact, I'm going to skip this one and move on to Surge Alloy 2x2. Uh, so that one was called 2x2+. Plus. This one is just 2x2. So this is the, my design. You, know, you might have seen this similar design with the other, other materials that I have being created. This one you can feed in the resources from any side. Resources come out the bottom, so you get your Surge Alloy coming out this bridge here. And then there are two unloaders that share the resources between all four of them. You need the two because there are a lot of resources that need to be shared. There's like, I think, 10 or 12 uh, to be able to get all of your titanium, your copper, your lead, and your uh, silicon shared. Uh, so this design, again, it fits into the, the, the gridding system. It's a little bit bigger than the other ones because it's the buildings are 3x3 three three rather than 2x2. Uh, two two. Um, so that requires a little bit extra space. But this design works great. You can put two or three of them along. You have to feed in all of the resources to the right places and it gets you uh, what you need to do. So I, this one I think is going to be my favorite. I'm going to put that one as, as, as an S tier. Um, and then we'll go to the, well, yeah. So there's a reason why I have this one as S tier and I'm going to put this other one as S tier. So this is Surge Alley 2x2+. Plus. You'll see that I put the same schematic in this one that was in the other one. But in this one, I have a vault in the top left corner, and I actually make my silicon as part of the schematic. I've got two uh, silicon smelters here that feed in this, the silicon. This is actually this very similar part, similar design that I have for my uh, my silicon smelter that I have as my tileable or my, my chainable. Um, this one pulls its lead out of the container, and then that feeds it into these other uh, smelters. The smelters then need to get the other resources from the bottom or the right hand side, um, as you would with it, your regular two by two. This allows you to not have to worry about uh, getting the silicon. You just feed in the, the sand, the coal, and the lead. And then over here, you feed in the copper and the titanium, and that gets you all the resources that you need. This one, 
I, uh, well, you know what? I said I was gonna give this one S tier. I haven't played with this one enough to say that this one is amazing. I think it's pretty good, and I might end up playing with it a lot more. For now, I'll, I'll give it A tier. Um, I do find it easier to just make the silicon someplace else and then pull it in rather than have it be part of the schematic, just for consistency purposes of the way I do the other back, the other two by two setups. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll give this one an A and I'll play with it a little bit more. So maybe in the future, my opinion of this one will change as I get more experience with it. All right. We already looked at that one. So let's jump over to Serge Alley from raw materials, no plastinium. So this one, I looked at it and I wanted to include it because it's an example of kind of a mess, right? It's got silicon smelters, the small version here, you feed in two coppers and a coal and you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven silicon smelters that will unload their materials between themselves, sharing them here, pull in the silicon to your four surge alloys, and you can feed in your other three resources with there's two feeds for your lead, um, and then we'll output them on the left-hand side. So the problem with this one is it's there's a lot of wasted space in here. You're gonna have rent, your, your uh, conveyor belts are tied to these very specific inputs. Um, the power node is right here, and I don't think that power node is going to reach to all of the all of the items. You probably needed a one more power node there. Uh, it's just kind of a mess. Um, this is the kind of of schematic that I try to avoid, and because it's just hard to understand, hard to fix if one of these bridges get messed up. Sometimes, if you put two things right next to each other, two schematics, one of the bridges might randomly connect to another bridge, and then you you might not notice that because there's so many bridges in here, and they're just all over the place. This is going to just cause you a headache. So I'm going to give that one an F tier. All right, this next one is another one that I created. This was uh, similar to the idea here that I put in the uh, the A tier, the sur scrap to surge alloy. This one I called surge alloy from scrap small. Uh, and the idea here is that you feed in scrap on the right hand side to this smelter or this melter, and it will create slag. The slag gets fed to these disassemblers. This also these sand. Uh, Crushers, I forget what they're called. We'll, we'll take the scrap, crush it into sand. Sand then gets fed into the smelter here. Uh, you do have to feed in uh, coal from the top or the bottom. So that is one more element. So it's, it's coal and scrap, I should say. It then creates the resources that you need, drops it into the surge alloy and feeds it out. So one of the more, the more creative things I had to do was what do you do with the graphite? This other guy, whoever created this one, scrap to surge alloy, figured out a creative way to handle the extra resource that you he, he destroys it um, or feeds it off through the, the containers to pass it to wherever it's going, the, co the core or whatever. Um, and in this case, I have it come out and then this um, overflow uh, valve or what do you want to call it, will send it off to the right hand side and it'll go to the core along with the extra materials. And that was how I figured out how to handle the, the extra graphite. So I like this one. Um, it's not one that I use quite frequently because usually I don't just have scrap and coal. I do other things and that gets me what I need. Uh, the other design's much more, it's much better to tile. Uh, I just wanted a way that on certain levels, I, if I needed a quick way to create this and get a trickle of it, I could have it. So I'm going to give it a C. It's not one that I'm particularly proud of, but uh, it does work. It's, it's fairly simple to use. All right, here's the next one. Surge alloy times three. This one I thought was uh, an interesting take on it. I've seen where people use cores and then pull out of cores. This one is a, uh, well, let's say, let's explain what it does. Off the left-hand side, you pull in your copper, your lead, your titanium, and your silicon, drop it into a core, and then you have one unloader that pulls in the resources that it needs, feeds it to this conveyor belt, and, and pushes out the surge alloy to the bottom. The problem with this is that you have a lot of resources that need to be pulled out, um, and these unloaders, I think, do 11. So I think this might be fast enough. I think there's 12. I need to look that up. Three to four to two to three. So it's four lead, three titanium, no, three silicon, two copper, and three titanium. So that is seven. It's 12. So the problem with this one is that it will, these unloaders will unload 11 resources. However, a, you have 11 resources a second. Surge alloy, however, is made up of 12 pieces. And so there's going to be a little bit of lag here. So if you put two of these unloaders, that will help fix that lag. Okay. So put two over here and two over here, and then this will feed out. So there's again, there's some problems with this design that I don't like. There's a lot of extra space. You're wasting the corners, and so it's not terribly compact. It is easy to understand. You feed in the resources on the left, and, and you get your, your surge alloy out. So this is a very functional one. 
Um, I'll give it a uh, a C. It's not one I would use, but you know it does the job. All right, this next one here. I seem to be missing one. It's the next one on the list here. All right, so we'll do this one. Surge alloy from storage. All right, so this is one that I don't think I'm the original creator of, but uh, I liked this one. So I and I didn't see it on the Ministry Schematic website, so I'm not quite sure who the original creator is on this one. Um, so what I what I have here is that you put a vault or yeah a vault on this left hand side and I didn't include it in the schematic for a reason because if you try and copy this you hold down F and click and drag it will try and copy the vault and if you try and place it I think the vault actually won't cause a problem um, because it'll be try to place it on top of the smelter it won't place and you would be fine but essentially you take this and you tile it off to the right or you chain it off to the right and by putting the vault in this spot here It'll pull all the resources it needs and feed it down the way. And then you just line up these conveyor belts along the bottom and it will collect all of your surge alloy together and you can send it wherever it needs to go. So this one works great. It's very compact. Um, eventually, as you get like four down, the unloaders don't keep up properly. And so you end up with some of the ones on the far side get not getting enough resources. And so you have to feed in additional uh, lead. And, and so this one's a very simple one. I'll give it a B. It's not one I use anymore, but it was one that for a while I liked and used. All right, so we skipped that one. All right, so this one, surge alloy times five, okay? So this one, there were three or four schematics on the website that had designs like this, where they had lots of, lots of conveyor belts at the bottom, feeding in all your resources in perfect straight lines, sorters that would then send it where it needs to go. So you put all these resources in a perfect straight line, and it takes a little bit of precision with your mouse to do that, and then feeds it up to... The smelters who get all the, the resources that they need. If it doesn't fit, it'll pass it to the next one. Uh, and then it will push all of this into the next smelter. That has, it's got five unloaders that will pull out the pieces that, it, that need to go to these other smelters here. You then take your, your um, surge alloy out the top here, and it goes to where it needs to go. Uh, like I said, there were three or four different versions. that had four, five, and six surge alloy. I don't like these because... Lining up all these conveyor belts perfectly is just not fun. Um, it's a lot easier to use the 2x2 two two approach where you can just put it really quickly to where it needs to go and then move on to doing the other things that you need to, to do. Um, so I think when you have something as complicated as this, having to take the time to line up all of these conveyor belts, you only have to get one of, the, uh, one of each resource because the other ones are just supplemental feeds, but then it's just going to be very inefficient with the, the four that are there. So the ratio of number of feeds to the number of items isn't great. Um, so I'm going to give this one a, a C. It works, but it's not it's not a, a schematic that I would use. All right, so this one might look familiar to some people. This is one that uh, it's very similar to the other basic design for like silicon and metal glass, where you have your your either your routers or your overflow gates. Um, to, you feed in your resources, and every time it hits a router, it sends it in the two or three different directions, and it feeds all the way through. The problem with this is it's very big. You have uh, eight different smelters and a lot of junctions. Uh, and by the time you get to the end, a lot of the resources are used up. So these last two don't really get that many resources. And so they're not working very good. Surge alloy comes up on the sides and then goes off to the left. It's just not the greatest design. I used these initially, but it just took up so much room that I ended up abandoning this approach. So, so this is someone else's design. Uh, mine was, I, I used only half of this. I, I wouldn't use this one anymore. It's going to get C tier. It's functional, just not the greatest. All right. I believe that is all of them. And we're back to that one. So there we have the ranking for Surge Alloy. Again, my favorite is the Surge Alloy 2x2. I'm still working on whether I like the Surge Alloy 2x2+. Plus. I did like the Scrap to Surge Alloy one. So that one should... Uh, that one I might try a little bit. All right. That's all I've got for today. Thank you for watching. Bye.